Welcome to this brief presentation on Braille codes and formats. In this presentation, we'll review the existing Braille codes that you'll commonly encounter, and we'll discuss basic formatting techniques for preparing documents that you'll be using with your students. Let's get started. Just a quick note, I am not a certified Braille transcriber. And everything I'm going to share with you in this presentation is from my perspective and what I've learned from working with people who are certified Braille transcribers and through trial and error. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to consult a certified Braille transcriber and the reference materials that are out there, such as the publication um, Principles of Print to Braille Translation. Uh, I will put some links to those below the video so you have some reference materials you can access. All right, let's get started. The first Braille code uh, we'd like to do a little quick refresher on to make sure we're all on the same page is uncontracted literary Braille. This consists of the 26 alphabet characters um, and punctuation symbols. It's really the uh, most basic form of Braille. There are no contractions, obviously, in uncontracted literary Braille. Uh, it's the easiest to learn. It would be suitable for beginning readers, and it's not suitable for math or science texts. Okay, contracted literary Braille is more complex than uncontracted literary Braille. It adds roughly 180 contractions okay, to the symbol set being used. Um, it was the standard for Braille in North America through 2015. Many of the books uh, that are out there that were transcribed before 2015 are going to be in contracted literary Braille. Um, as a reference, you can just see how much space contracted Braille saves you over uncontracted Braille. Um, the word afternoon, you can write in uh, a couple letters versus spelling the whole entire word out here. So, all right, that brings us to Unified English Braille. The Unified English Braille Code uh, was a way of unifying uh, all of the different English speaking countries and the Braille codes used in those countries. So this replaced separate Braille codes in Britain, Australia, and gave us all uh, one English code that we could use across all of the English speaking countries. Um, in 2016, Unified English Braille became the standard code used for producing Braille in North America. Nemeth Braille code, okay. In North America, Nemeth Braille is used for math and science materials. Um, the Nemeth code symbols are different than the math symbols used in Unified English Braille or UEB. Okay, so you'll definitely see a difference uh, when looking at UEB versus Nemeth. Um, the symbols are different for equals. All of your operators are different. Your um, numbers are in the upper half of the cell in UEB, but you'll notice when you're working in the Nemeth code, all of your numbers appear in the lower half of the Braille cell. Foreign languages. Duxbury can convert foreign language materials into their corresponding Braille codes. Um, so they can convert uh, print French into Braille French, um, but it doesn't translate from one language to another. So you can't take English and then run it through Duxbury and expect to get French Braille. It has to already be written in the language that you want it translated. So print French, Braille French. Print Spanish, Braille Spanish. English speaking students learning to read and speak a foreign language will be using uncontracted Braille. Um, when uh, a native Spanish or French speaker learns Braille, they have a contracted Braille code they use, but all of the students in North America learning a foreign language will be using textbooks that have uncontracted foreign language Braille in them. The computer Braille code, this is another one that's good to know about. Um, the computer Braille code is used mainly on 
computerized braille displays, which are called refreshable braille displays. You might see these uh, braille displays on your students' devices, such as braille note takers, uh, a braille note, or a braille sense. Um, these devices uh, will often use the computer braille code for some amount of the uh, entries the student has to make. Um, in the computer braille code, there are two extra dots added to the braille cell, dots seven and eight. By using these extra dots, it allows the braille cell, the single braille cell, to represent more characters because now you have eight dots to work with instead of six. So good to know about that. Braille formats. So when you're formatting your documents for your student, it's a good idea to take a look at the different types of formats out there. We have Braille page width, which is a standard width of 40 cells. So most textbooks, there'll be 40 cells across the line. Um, and the paper size in inches here in the United States would be 11 by 11 and a half. So a narrow Braille page is only usually 30 cells, okay? And that's your standard eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper. Uh, on both the wider paper that holds 40 lines across, um, it, you'll usually get 25 lines and you'll have uh, a half inch margin on the top and the bottom. That's the same for both the larger wider Braille paper and the narrower Braille paper. Braille transcriber lingo. This is really important. And this is something I think that's often left out of the courses when you're learning Braille. But as you start to transcribe documents for your students, it helps to know a little bit of the Braille transcriber lingo to use the software programs um, that you'll be using to transcribe documents. OK, so indent. Okay, now indent's a pretty straightforward term. We're used to that from print. So it usually determines when we talk about indent, the first placement of a character in a paragraph. Okay, so um, indent to three means that you would start writing in the third cell of the Braille paragraphs. So you'd hit space twice, you'd go space, space, and then you'd start writing in that third cell. So a standard paragraph indent would be indent to three, which means you skip two spaces and you start writing in the third cell. Okay, run over. So run over is the position at which all subsequent lines of the same segment are begin. So for example, um, a standard paragraph would have an indent of three and a run over of one, right? So that means that in a standard paragraph, you indent to the third cell and you start writing in the third cell, but when it wraps to a new line, it starts in the first cell all the way at the left edge. So that's called um, an indent of three and a run over of one. And a hanging indent, the first line is close to the left edge and then subsequent lines of that same passage are further to the right. Okay, so this would be like an, uh, an indent of one starting in that first cell at the left edge, but a run over of three. So if something wraps to the next braille line, you would indent two spaces and start writing it in the third cell. Blocking something, okay, that would be when we have the run over and the indent are the same. So a block would be the indent and the run over the same. You might block something in, for example, often directions. If you're getting directions for a worksheet, they'll be blocked. Um, the standard way to do that is in five, five. So an indent of five and a run over of five. So all directions are indented five spaces from the left. And if it runs to another line, uh, that was also indented five spaces. Okay, so that's block. Headings, okay, you'll often encounter headings when you're formatting your documents for your students. Um, there's really, it says three kinds of headings. I think there's really mainly two headings of headings that you encounter most of the time, major headings and minor headings. So a major heading, okay, has a blank line above, 
It has centered text and a blank line below. So often that would be like a chapter heading in a, if you were preparing a document for your student, a chapter heading could be a major heading, okay? A minor heading, or um, a lot of times you'll see referred this to referred to as a level two heading uh, at a blank line above and then indent to cell five. So you'll space over four times and start your, um, your braille in cell five. Okay, and then runovers, if it wraps to a second line, will also begin in cell five, and there's no blank line below that. It just starts with the next passage or the next paragraph. So that would be considered a minor heading or a level two heading. So for example, subchapter headings, like, you know, you'd have uh, chapter one and you'd have chapter sections, like section 1.1 of that chapter could be a um, minor heading. Let's talk a little bit more about formats. The literary format um, is a format where we just mainly pay attention to braille page numbers and we disregard print page numbers. Um, braille page numbers are usually placed in the upper right-hand corner of each braille page. And the transcriber has a lot of wide latitude in determining what's included in the braille copy and maybe things from the print are excluded such as charts. Um, literary doc format is useful for things where they're short documents um, and there's no um, table of contents, index. Um, basically, you don't need to worry about conveying information about the layout of the original print document you're transcribing. You're just providing the information reformatted for Braille. That's often considered uh, a literary format. On the other hand, textbook format is what we would use uh, when we want to preserve the greatest amount of information regarding the structure and layout of the original print document. Um, we keep the print page numbers, we don't discard them, and we place them in the upper right hand corner of each braille page. If a print page doesn't fit all of its contents on a single braille page, then we will just start putting letters in front of that page number. So for example, if you had a print page that took up three pages in braille, the first page would just have the page number in the upper right-hand corner of the braille page. But each subsequent page would have a letter in front of it. So if it was page 50, the first braille page would say 50. The next page would be A50. The third braille page would be B50 and so on until you have all the content from that print page in the braille copy. And then you would go to the next print page number. So again, we just put a letter in front of the page number uh, if it takes up more than one braille page. Um, we still continue to place braille page numbers in the bottom right-hand corner of the document. And again, the textbook format is more really more suited toward documents where the braille reader needs to have uh, information such as where this originally appeared in print, the print page numbers that maybe the other students are on so that they can reference where to go in the copy if the teacher says turn to print page, you know, 17, so that they can find that location in their braille copy. Other transcription rules. Um, let's see, let's look at these real quick. Uh, remember that for a standard paragraph, the first character begins in cell three, so that's an indent to cell three. Um, we only place one space between sentences, so there's only one space between sentences, not two in Braille. Um, those are important to remember. Uh, I'm going to link a UEB cheat sheet just to give everybody a refresher again on all of the UEB alphabet letters and symbols. So we'll go ahead and place that as a link below the video. Templates in Duxbury. When you're using the Duxbury Braille Translator program, um, some things to note are that there are separate templates for the literary format and for the textbook Braille formats. When you create a new file, you're going to be prompted to select a, a template. If you want a basic template where you don't have those uh, print page numbers and you're not as concerned about formatting, then you're going to pick the UEB basic Braille template. Uh, if you want to select one where you're going to retain more information and maybe insert some print page numbers, 
then or you're working with a the microsoft word add-in which which i recommend you watch that video after this one about using the swift add-in if you're working with that then you're going to want to make sure you select the uh bana template the bana ueb bana or ueb bana with nemeth template and that's it these are just references so thank you for watching this brief presentation to hopefully it was a useful refresher on the different Braille codes and formats that you'll encounter. Um, I will go ahead and place a link to that UEB cheat sheet uh, below this video and also uh, some other links to uh, principles of printed Braille transcription that has all the official transcriber rules uh, for you to reference. So thanks for watching.